welcome to Art Driven Rose everyone and specifically welcome to my kitchen. You see for me, cars and coffee is not only about cars. It's about coffee too. So whether you want to make a great cappuccino or latte for your family or your friend that came over to talk about cars, then this video will teach you how to do that in home conditions on a low budget. So let's begin with answering the question, why should I be the person who should teach you how to make the perfect coffee? Well, that's because in the past years, I worked as a professional barista in several places. And when I'm saying a professional barista, I don't mean working at the generic chain or large chain coffee shops. I'm talking about dedicated shops that make coffee using semi-automatic espresso machines. And although currently I'm not working as a professional barista anymore, I still have my espresso machine that keeps my skills very sharp. Before we move any further, I want to make a quick disclaimer for this video. You can make a perfect cappuccino or latte at home, but that means you'll need some time. And what I'm saying is that this video is dedicated for the people who are willing to spend a little bit more time when they make a coffee, either in the morning, lunch, or dinner, doesn't matter. But we're talking about 10, 15 minutes per entire operation. And that's mainly because you have to clean the espresso machine every time after each use in order for it to function properly. If you want a simple coffee just by pressing one button, then this video may not be for you. But if you want to find the secret of real coffee and real cappuccino, then this is the video for you. Okay, so let's start with the machine itself. And I guess that's going to be the most expensive piece of hardware you'll need to purchase for uh, making the cappuccino and latte. Now, when I was searching specifically for this machine, I was thinking first about the machines I used in the past in the coffee shops, uh, what I've worked for. These are very expensive professional machines. When it comes to home use, there is a variety of espresso machines that are differentiated by type, amount of uh, water boilers inside and so on. In this video we're trying to keep a low budget for our perfect cappuccino. In this case, I have this Cuisine Art EM100M and to prove you that this is a pretty good machine, I've been using it for about a year and a half at this point and it's been reliable at least until today. And I've obviously done a lot of research trying to figure out which one would work best for me and still deliver a really good quality cappuccino and latte. I paid less than $200 for it at the time. I'm gonna leave a link in the description for you to check it out but I think I bought it from Target. This is a pretty simple unit. As I said, the difference between the large consumer espresso machines and the more advanced ones are the amount of water boilers they have inside. Basically, what I mean by that is that you have a separate uh, water boiler for the actual espresso extraction, and then you have a separate boiler for the actual foamer or milk steamer. In this case, uh, there's only one boiler. You have to switch between brewing an espresso and foaming the milk, which is not a big deal, uh, but in professional uh, shops, you can do it at the same time. So you can brew the espresso while foaming the milk. So by the time the espresso is ready uh, and hot, you can pour the steamed milk right away. Nevertheless, uh, in this case, as I said, it's only one boiler, and honestly, it's more than adequate. I have to double check, but I think the water pressure is 17 psi or 15, something like that. But basically, this is enough pressure for you to steam the milk for your cappuccino. It's gonna take a little bit longer than it does in the professional shops, but it's more than enough for home use. Also, the beauty of this machine specifically is that it comes with a kit for you to prepare coffee, which means that you don't have to buy anything extra unless you want to, which was my case. So basically it comes with a uh, coffee holder and a portal filter, and depending on the amount of coffee you wanna brew, it has three different uh, portal filters. Uh, so this is the largest one. You can brew uh, a double espresso, and the set also comes this one, which is for a single espresso. And then this one, and this is the one I never used before, this is for coffee, grounded coffee that comes in pouches. So you can put the pouch here, brew the coffee under pressure, and it'll keep the filter itself clean. So it's convenient, I guess, but in my experience, I hardly can find good coffee in these type of uh, little bags to be brewed. So 
uh, I almost never use it. Besides that, the kit comes this spoon with a temper. So, and basically when you pour coffee in the uh, holder itself, you're supposed to fill up the coffee until the edge of it and then press it with this side. Now, I don't use this temper because it's not the correct approach for me. Traditionally, when you pour coffee in your holder, you need an even pressure applied to the coffee, which is why I went to Amazon and bought this thing, uh, which is a proper temper. It's a pretty heavy piece of metal, but when you apply on top of your uh, coffee, it presses it evenly, as it's done in the professional shops. Uh, I'm gonna leave the link in the description for all these items. I'm, I had to buy extra on top of what was in the kit, but again, if you don't want to, you don't have to buy them. Also, this stand here, I also purchased it from Amazon, and it's really convenient for uh, holding this uh, temper and also put the spoon. And also, I'm gonna, as I'm gonna show you later, uh, when you actually pour the coffee in the, uh, in the holder, you need a pretty stable and rubberized space to press it and keep everything in one place. Also, in the kit with the coffee machine comes this milk pitcher. This is a 12 ounce, as far as I remember, pitcher. And just so you're aware, this pitcher is going to be perfect for an 8 ounce uh, cappuccino or latte cup. I'm normally using a 10 ounce cup for cappuccino and generally speaking this milk pitcher can barely fill this 10 ounce cup. And yes you may say well it's a 12 ounce why couldn't it fill a 10 ounce cup? And the reason for that is because when you steam milk you're not pouring milk all the way up. So in order to steam properly you need to or milk right or until where that nose comes in. So basically it's half of the pitcher with cold milk and then you're gonna add another three to four ounces of foam which will be mixed with that milk and that's what creates the body of your cappuccino or latte. So that's why a 12 ounce pitcher is enough for eight ounce. So because of that I bought a 16 ounce milk pitcher for that same reason. So and it's been really nice. I don't use it too often because for me personally, an eight ounce cappuccino latte is more than enough, but it depends, it depends on you. A few more things about the machine itself. So as you can see, it's a pretty convenient setup. It has this kind of low tray, and this is basically for the water and coffee to be poured in when you, when you take out the holder, so all the spills will go here. So it's pretty convenient, it's easy to detach. Now the top area is what is called the, the heat bed. Well, that's what I would call it. But basically you want to start your coffee machine not right before you create the coffee, but uh, 15 minutes before you start actually doing coffee because all of your utensils have to be warmed up because coffee is very pretentious. So that's what I'm basically going to do now. I'm going to turn it on. It makes this funny noise, but nothing alarming. The sound itself is not that loud. Anyway, so in the meantime, this top bed is going to heat up and it's gonna warm up my uh, holder and also the cup itself I'm gonna be using for, for the cappuccino. Uh, so you can either put it on top, ideally you want it to be facing it down so it's, it's hitting evenly, not only the button. Or if you're in a rush and don't have that much time, what I'm doing is just uh, heating it up on the, on the stove for a few seconds. Well, I'll say 10, 15 seconds is normally enough. Again, you want the cup itself to be warm for the coffee if you want the perfect cappuccino. There is this reservoir with water in the bag. I'm not going to detach it because uh, I already turned on the machine, so it takes water from the reservoir in the back. But just to make you aware, this reservoir is very adequate. When I say adequate, I mean uh, if only half of it is filled up with water, I can use it for five cups of coffee, five cappuccinos, and I'm saying brewing and uh, folding the milk itself. So it's very large for, for the amount of coffee you're gonna be doing. Uh, also, the foamer or the stimmer itself. In the kit, it comes with this, I'd say kind of pipe on top of the actual top of the actual hose, the metal hose that will stem the milk. Right from the first day I removed it because you really want to keep this nozzle clean. And when you have this extra pipe on top, it's not easy to do that. So you can remove it right away. It's actually gonna make your milk much better. Now let's talk about the coffee itself. Now I've tried several different coffee manufacturers. So far the best producer of coffee that 
is both very balanced in taste and quality uh, for me is Lavazza. And I initially started to buy smaller bags with coffee and it's Lavazza Espresso and that coffee was grounded. But recently, because the prices started to go up, I decided to try the beans. And so far they're, they're pretty good for, for, for the price. And also to grind those beans, uh, I think it's 10 or 12 dollars from Amazon. I bought this grinder, it can also be used for spices at home, but I'm using it for coffee. And it's pretty convenient, simple operation. And the manual has the actual timing uh, you need for your coffee, depending on the size of the granules you want to use. Now, about the size itself, you see, in a traditional coffee shop, you would have a grinder where you have to adjust the size of the granules all the time because coffee is very pretentious, as I said. Uh, it's very sensible to the temperature and the humidity in the room where the coffee is stored. Uh, so that's why in the morning before the coffee shop starts to operate, the barista will, will do several adjustments of the grinder to compensate for the room temperature and humidity. Uh, in our case, and I'm going to show you when we actually get to brew the coffee, you don't have to do that. Specifically because these porta filters have multiple holes on the inside but only one hole on the outside which means that the whole coffee or liquid or extraction is pressed to one single hole which means regardless of how poorly your coffee is grinded you're gonna get a consistent crema on top of your uh, espresso which is what most people are looking for anyway if you want to go the extra mile you can buy on Amazon a proper porta filter with holes, equal holes from one side into the other one. And in this case, you're actually gonna be able to see the difference between the extraction time and taste when you do that. Uh, with the ones that come in the kit with the coffee machine, you don't have to do that. Nevertheless, if you're ignoring too much the grinding uh, well, size of granulas, uh, you will feel the difference in uh, taste. What I found to work best is to use eight regular spoons of uh, coffee beans and grind them for exactly 16 seconds. That's more than adequate. You'll have a, you'll have a pretty thin ground, and the coffee itself will come up pretty pretty good. And also, once you grind the coffee, try to keep it in a very tight, ideally vacuum space. Uh, I'm not bothering too much with it, so I'm just using a regular jar, but the cap is rubberized. As I said earlier, if you don't want to deal with grinding the coffee on your own just buy the pre-grounded uh, coffee. Just make sure it says espresso on it. All right, so I think you guys know enough right now about the coffee itself, how to grind it, how what to look for, and the machine itself. So we can move to the actual process of making coffee. And we're gonna start with grinding the coffee itself. Alright, so we got our coffee freshly grounded, and that's what you want for the next cappuccino latte. So I'm gonna grab the holder and I'm gonna pour coffee in it and temper it as I showed you earlier. After you got the coffee inside, then you can insert it in the espresso machine itself. Make sure this knob is uh, looking vertical, which will showcase that it's in espresso mode. And once you insert the holder, make sure to start the brewing process right away, because otherwise this head here is very hot, so it's going to start to burn your coffee. Put your cup right underneath, and keep in mind, if we're talking about brewing espresso with a espresso machine, we're talking about a range of 25 to 30 seconds. This machine doesn't have a timer, so you're either gonna have to use your watch, your phone, or something, or just count uh, to 25 to 30 seconds, and this is gonna be your perfect uh, time of extraction and the amount of coffee that's gonna be extracted 
to the cup itself. So that's very important. After we've done that, we can put the cup back on top of the heated bag just to keep the coffee warm while we're foaming the milk. As far as milk goes, depending on your allergies, obviously you're gonna use different type of milk, but just so you know, the standard whole milk or even a reduced fat up to 1% is the best milk to be from or stim. That's because it has just that enough amount of fat. Over time, I learned to foam any type of milk and I was pretty good at it, but consider that uh, foaming a skim milk or soy milk or almond milk or, uh, or oat milk or any other non-lactose milk is much, much harder. So you can always start with regular milk. But again, if you have allergies, then you'll have to use and learn how to stim the other types of milk, which is not that hard. It just takes time for you to learn. The idea is basically the same. So we're gonna use the small pitcher that came in the kit with the machine. And as I said, we're pouring milk just until it reaches the nose at the bottom. So here's our milk here. Uh, it's very important to, for it to be cold. If it's warm, you don't have enough time to create those bubbles and stim the milk properly. Also, before you even start preparing your coffee, make sure you have a wet towel in order for you to clean this nozzle, which is very important because otherwise the nozzle itself is it's hot. So if you're not cleaning it after each use, the milk is gonna dry and stain this nozzle, which is not ideal. So we stem the milk. As you can see, the texture on top is kind of matte. What you want to do is to start rotating this picture in order to get that glossy foam or texture of the milk. Now, one more thing, you might have seen other videos where people are knocking the picture on the surface they're, they're using to break those bubbles. Keep in mind one thing, if you foam the milk in a wrong way and you have a lot of bubbles, you can beat this picture to death on the surface, but you're not gonna remove those bubbles. That move is just to remove the top few bubbles that are left when you foam the milk. If you have too many bubbles, then that's not gonna help you. Just instead of beating it, start pouring the milk as is. It's not gonna do much difference. So you have the milk, you've cleaned the nozzle. Now we can move to the actual technique of pouring the milk into the cup. And that's a very important step, of course. Generally for the best, uh, result you want the handle of the cup to face you when you grab it and this is done because when you pour the milk into the cup your drawing is going to face the person who's going to be drinking the cup i can grab the handle from here and when i turn the cup to my side i'm going to see the drawing nicely facing me instead of going sideways so that's just a pro tip anyway the pouring itself before you start pouring you want to wiggle the cup a little bit and that's just to spread that cream from the top evenly on the surface of the cup as far as the pouring itself goes you keep your cup a little bit sideways like that you don't want to pour obviously espresso out of it but you start with a little bit of angle you start pouring the milk in circle or moves this way you're mixing the milk with the espresso on the bottom so that you're not using any spoon or so ideally this happens naturally when you pour the milk into the cup it's gonna evenly mix with the espresso on it so do that just a little bit once you are uh, let's say one third of the cup with the milk, you can start actually draw. So you, you still keep the cup a little bit of an angle. Start bringing the picture much, much closer to the cup itself. The closer the picture or the nozzle is to the surface of the coffee, the more pronounced your drawing is going to appear. And even if you're not good at actually doing this drawing, as long as you keep the nozzle very close to the surface of the coffee, you're gonna get some, some pattern or, or something. Keep in mind that at its core, all of the design or all of the drawing moves you, you've seen in other videos or photos are starting in the same way. So it's like it's shaking or swinging the picture on the surface of the cup. And then by moving the picture transversely, you actually start to get that cut or 
or a line in the middle that separates and creates that final touch of the drawing. I know it's may, it might be hard to assimilate, but over time you're gonna get used to it. And I think I forgot to answer the biggest question you might have had from the beginning. What is the difference between cappuccino and latte? Well, the difference is the thickness of the foam, in which case the actual amount of milk will differ a little bit as well. Basically, if you have a latte, that foam layer is gonna be thinner, and if you have a cappuccino, that foam layer is going to be thicker. That is the only difference between cappuccino and latte. In a classic way, I'm not talking about the big chain coffee shops. So there you have it, a beautiful cappuccino, more or less. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. As long as you follow the instructions on the time of extraction and foaming the milk, it doesn't really matter the design on the top of actual, of actual cup. Think of the design or the drawing on top of the coffee like a byproduct of you making a good espresso and steam the milk properly. Because if the milk is steamed poorly, then you can try as much as you can uh, to draw something. It's, not, it's just not gonna happen. But if you do it properly, it's just gonna come almost instantly on top because that foam is very dense and it will deposit on the top of the coffee. So that's, that's the right way of thinking about it. Now, the last thing is left is to actually clean the machine. And as I said, making coffee this way is a little bit more time consuming, but it's very rewarding. And if you do that on, on weekends or even if you're dedicating like a 15 minute before you start your work day, it's really worth it because in 15 minutes, you got yourself a basically professional grade cup of cappuccino with very little cost and it's at home you don't have to run to any coffee shops and also run into a situation where the coffee can be too hot or too cold by the time it gets to you one more thing actually i forgot to mention so regardless of what you're used to in coffee shops cappuccino or latte is not a hot drink yes it's not a hot drink it's a warm drink you're not supposed to burn your lip when drinking it. One thing I forgot to mention is that when you steam the milk, this is how you hold your picture. So you're grabbing it from the side and your hand is actually gonna be the indicator of when the, the temperature of the milk is, is good. Because as soon as it starts burning your hand, you have to drop it. It means it, it's ready. It doesn't have to be any hotter than that. Uh, and it means that if it's burning hot for your hand, it's gonna be just perfect for your mouth. All right, so the last thing that's left is to clean the machine. You're gonna remove the holder from its place. You're gonna dump the grounded brewed coffee either in your trash can or if you want, uh, you can compost it. It's a perfect natural use of this grounded coffee. Anyway, you dump it, you clean it under water. That's no more than enough, basically, and then with the towel, you're actually gonna be cleaning this button button area of the heated element. It's very important to be sure that no coffee is sticking to that uh, hot element. And yeah, by that time, you already have your nozzle clean. You can turn the machine off and that's about it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or suggestions. Thanks all for watching and I'll see you next time.